Have you ever experienced or witnessed a difficult spinal puncture in a young slim patient with landmarks visible from a mile? In these cases, no matter what you do, you always seem to hit the bone. And in fact, I will dare to say that most struggles with spinal anesthesia that I have witnessed were actually in skinny patients with easy landmarks. In this video, you will learn four specific tips and techniques that will make your next spinal anesthesia or lumbar puncture much easier and more predictable. The intrathecal or subarachnoid space is completely enclosed by the bones, but the traditional teaching of spinal anesthesia techniques only talks about the soft layers that the needle passes on its way to the intrathecal space. In a little bit, we're going to review the Nysora's augmented reality animation about those layers that the needle is passing through. But here's the key to the success when the needle hits the bone all the time. Ask yourself, which bone is preventing me from placing the needle successfully? Or which osseous structure is on my way toward the subarachnoid space? And before we get there, let's quickly review the anatomical structures the needle is passing through when performing a midline approach to spinal anesthesia or lumbar puncture. For this, we're going to use Nesora's augmented reality animation. Let's see this. The needle first goes through the skin, then through the subcutaneous tissue, then through the supraspinous ligament, then through the interspinous ligament, ligamentum flavum, and finally, the subarachnoid space once it passes through the dura. If you like this augmented style of learning, you should subscribe to the Compendium of Regional Anesthesia. Compendium of Regional Anesthesia is an augmented reality ebook with countless animations, clinical videos of regional anesthesia, and if you subscribe on Nesora's LMS, you can also share and discuss cases, ask questions, and read tricks and tips by the Nesora's community. As a chief of service, I'm often the one who gets to solve the difficult spinal, and when I step in to help, I usually do not scrub and take over. Instead, I ask the trainee or the colleague I'm helping with, what osseous structure, what bone is stopping your needle now? And the answer to this question is the key to the meaningful redirection and success. And yet, I'm always surprised that no one thinks about this when the needle path is stopped by the bone. I then grab a spine model and I explain the principle of three axes which often solve the problem immediately. So let's get this first and then we will discuss a typical scenario of a difficult spinal. When troubleshooting difficult spinal or lumbar puncture, you must consider the three dimensional view. Okay, the first dimension is the vertical. So you always ask yourself if your needle is inserted in the interspace or at one of the spinal processes. So that way you can actually reinsert the needle vertically. The second dimension is the horizontal one. Am I in the midline or off midline? And if I'm off midline, am I off midline to the right or to the left? Because this will impact your micro redirections or reinsertion of the needle alongside the horizontal axis to place it in the midline. And a third dimension that is very important, just the same, is the depth. Always ask yourself, at which depth my needle is contacting the spine? Because that will determine very much what you do when you redirect the needle for the next attempt. Let's see this. So here's a typical scenario, multiple attempts and needle insertion into the subarachnoid space are unsuccessful. The operator hits the bone all the time, no matter what he or she does. And the frustration sets in, and instead of pausing to rethink the strategy, the operator often increases the speed of needle insertion and the number of attempts to perform the spinal. Worse yet, the operator changes the needle insertion point to a new one, but only one or two millimeter away from the original attempt. When I see multiple needle insertion sites clustered within a square centimeter, I can immediately make a diagnosis that the operator has not been trained properly and does not think through the process. In other words, he or she performs the spinal anesthetic or lumbar puncture automatically, textbook-wise, without the ability to make decisions in the process. Such a minuscule change in the insertion site of a millimeter or two from each other cannot possibly make 
any difference to the location of the needle tip, which is five to seven centimeters deeper. In an ideal scenario, the needle would never encounter any osseous structures, but when it does, you must stop and ask yourself a question, which bony structure is on the way of the needle now? There are four typical scenarios. Scenario number one, the needle touches the bone superficially. When that happens, what that means is that we are in the midline, but not in the interspace. The course of action is take the needle out and do not reposition by reorienting cephalad or laterally. Rather, take the needle completely out of the skin and reinsert the needle one centimeter up or one centimeter down to place the needle in the interspace. Scenario number two, the needle enters and touches the bone deeper at about two to four centimeter deeper. What that really means is that we are not in the midline, rather that we are paramedial one side or the other, and the needle is now touching the lamina. In this case, we need to withdraw the needle to the skin and do what I call micro directions, laterally one side, laterally the other side, or slightly cranially. But again, the key word here is micro directions, one side, the other side, or slightly cranially. Never caudally, because the needle can never enter the intrathecal space if you reorient your needle caudally. Scenario number three is where the needle enters up to six to eight centimeters and touches bone. Most of these situations, in my clinical observations, the practitioners are now desperate and they tend to abandon the procedure and take the needle out. But in fact, if you touch the bone at six to eight centimeters distance, what that really means is that you have missed the dural click. You were in a correct position, but you missed the dural click and you passed through the subarachnoidal space. What you need to do is pull the needle back by one centimeter and watch for the CSF to show up at the hub of the needle. Scenario number four is where the needle enters all the way to the hub and you do not get any bone contact. In many of these scenarios, the operators tend to think that the needle is too short and they request for a longer needle, whereas in fact they are paramedial without knowing it. They missed the midline and they have inserted the needle into the psoas muscle and they are edging towards the abdominal cavity. The course of action is take the needle out completely and then reassess for the midline. Keep these four scenarios in mind every time you do spinal anesthesia or lumbar puncture. And if you do, I guarantee you that you will become a lot better at spinal and lumbar puncture and you will end up helping others instead of asking for help. Make sure to watch these other Nysoras videos on spinal anesthesia on this channel. And do visit Nysoras LMS and the Compendium of Regional Anesthesia, which is Nysoras Augmented Reality ebook on everything regional anesthesia. And if you like Nysoras video, be sure to subscribe, click the notification bell as well, and never miss the new one.